This is one of the most boring, technical, and critically important pieces of information I'm about to give you. <laughs> How many of y'all are doing nursing? You will need this. Okay, hormonal regulation of blood pressure. First hormone is antidiuretic hormone. What do diuretics make you do? So an antidiuretic makes you not pee. Not pee. Also, okay. Antidiuretic hormone comes from the posterior pituitary. So the stimuli that would cause the posterior pituitary to release ADH would be a decrease in blood volume, an increase and plasma osmolarity. Osmolarity is how much stuff is dissolved in your plasma. Or something called angiotensin 2. Okay. Blood volume, if, in other words, if you're bleeding, you're losing blood, right? Decreasing blood volume. Makes sense? Yeah. Plasma osmolality, what that refers to is how, how concentrated your blood is. When you get dehydrated, you don't have enough fluid, you've got too much stuff. Does that make sense? That's increased plasma osmolality. It's like Kool-Aid that hasn't been diluted out good. Now, where does ADH go? ADH goes to the kidney. So the target of ADH is, well, a couple things. Kidneys and blood vessels. Now, what is ADH? What is its job? What is its function? What does it do? It says to the kidney, reabsorb water. In other words, don't pee. In other words, the kidney is making urine. Take some of that water that's in the urine, reabsorb it, put it back into the bloodstream. And so you're making a smaller, smaller volume of urine. Makes your urine smaller in volume but more concentrated. Correct. It says to the blood vessels constrict, which increases the pressure. So if you start bleeding out, your blood volume drops, your blood pressure is going to drop, right? Or if you get dehydrated, your blood gets too concentrated, you need to, you need to put fluid, water, back into the bloodstream, dilute everything back out, right? Make sense? Okay. All right. Angiotensin II, this guy right here, is one of the coolest things. is going to cause the kidneys to release a substance called renin. Renin is basically an enzyme. I know it didn't say ACE, but it's an enzyme. Renin converts a protein that your liver makes called angiotensinogen. Renin, this angiotensinogen is a protein that's made by your liver. This is a protein that's just floating around in your bloodstream at all times. There's not much of it, but you won't watch it, but there's a little bit of it. So this comes from the liver. When blood pressure drops, the kidney releases renin. Renin converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. And then this is angiotensin 1 is carried by the bloodstream to the lungs. And when angiotensin 1 reaches the pulmonary capillaries, they come into contact with another enzyme called ACE. And that converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Now, this is an extremely powerful substance. So you have to go through two steps to go from the precursor molecule. And anytime you see OGN at the end of the molecule, it's a precursor, an inactive form of molecule. When we get to the blood, we'll talk about, you'll see this thing again. You'll see lots of OGNs. Now, what does it do? It stimulates the release of another hormone called aldosterone. It stimulates ADH release. It makes you thirsty. And it stimulates vasoconstriction. So, angiotensin 2 says to the adrenal cortex, release aldosterone. It says to the posterior pituitary, release ADH. It says to your brain, you're thirsty. It says to your blood vessels, constrict. 
of course, what happens is ADH makes your kidneys reabsorb water. You drink water because you're thirsty, and the vessels constrict, and so this raises blood pressure. Aldosterone comes from the adrenal cortex. Its target is the kidney, and it stimulates the kidney to reabsorb sodium. Because what happens is when the kidney suck back sodium, water follows the sodium. So anything that causes your blood pressure to drop is going to make your blood vessels constrict, it's going to make your kidneys reabsorb water, it's going to make your kidneys reabsorb sodium, and it's going to make you thirsty. Because by reabsorbing water, water goes back into the bloodstream. Reabsorbing sodium makes it easier to get the water back into the bloodstream. Salt sucks, right? Yes, right? Okay. So the water can osmose back into the bloodstream by following the sodium ions. If you're drinking more water, water is being absorbed through your digestive system into the bloodstream. And if your blood vessels are constricting, they're increasing resistance, which increases blood pressure. Okay. Now, stimuli for um, aldosterone release would be, of course, increased angiotensin 2, just like up here. Or low sodium. All right, now erythropoietin. Erythropoietin's main job is to tell the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. No. Erythropoietin, EPO. EPO is produced by the kidneys. Anytime oxygen level decreases or blood pressure decreases. So the target for this is bone marrow and it stimulates red cell production. It stimulates erythropoiesis. Remember, the thicker your blood is, the thicker the viscosity, the higher the pressure. And so by releasing more red blood cells into the bloodstream, you're making the blood thicker, which raises the pressure. Now, obviously, if you have more red blood cells in the bloodstream, their blood is going to be able to carry more oxygen. So the main effect of erythropoietin is to increase red blood cell production. But it has a, a side effect, a secondary effect, of increasing blood pressure by increasing blood viscosity. Remember that the adrenal glands are sitting on top of the kidney. The adrenal cortex is the outer part of the adrenal gland. The inside of the adrenal gland is called the adrenal medulla. Now you'll see these terms cortex and medulla a lot. Medulla always with respect the kidney has a medulla. The kidney has a cortex, which is an outer region, and a deeper region called the medulla. Lymph nodes have cortices and medullas. So you'll see these terms uh, repeatedly. Now, <clears throat> the adrenal cortex produces, among other things, aldosterone. Anybody know what the adrenal medulla produces? The adrenal medulla produces epinephrine and norepinephrine, also known as adrenaline and norepinephrine. So when we talk, when we talk about your fight or flight response, we talk about the sympathetic autonomic nervous system kicking in. It kicks in and it gets everything started. The adrenal gland kicks in and continues the effect because it releases these hormones from its center part of the medulla.
heart's trying to pump the blood that's left to get it around to the body to perfuse the tissues. All right, so here we are. Here we're having little people, normal blood pressure, normal blood volume, normal blood pressure. Something disturbs us, <laughs> and our blood volume and or blood pressure decrease. Could be because we stood up too fast. Could be because we got shot in the terminal artery. <laughs> Could be because we were outside working in the sun and we sweated and got ourselves dehydrated. Anything that causes blood volume and or blood pressure to drop. Okay. Now, the first thing that's going to kick in is your fight or flight. Right? Nervous system always kicks in first. Nervous system first, endocrine system later. Right? Okay. So the nervous system is going to say, okay, increase your cardiac output. So, heart rate's going to go up, stroke volume's going to increase. And you, this is going to um, cause peripheral vasoconstriction. You're going to shunt blood from the periphery to basically the brain and the skeletal muscles. Okay. Long term, you're going to get renin from the kidneys. You're going to have this activation to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is going to say release the ADH. Kidneys are going to save water. Increase blood volume, which increases blood pressure. The kidneys are going to say to the adrenal cortex, release the aldosterone. That's going to tell the kidneys to save sodium, which is going to help it save water, increasing blood volume and blood pressure. It's going to make you thirsty. Drink more water, increases blood volume. And it also causes vasoconstriction. So angiotensin 2, remember, does four things. Thirsty, vasoconstriction, ADH release, aldosterone. All right, and then um, the kidneys can also release erythropoietin, which makes more red cells, which makes the blood thicker, which increases the blood pressure, and all of, the, all of this working together keeps you alive. So, your body has a bazillion different ways to make sure your blood pressure stays up. If blood pressure drops, your kidneys are going to shut down. Your tissues aren't going to be perfused. Your brain is going to shut down. And after that, who cares? So you have to keep blood flowing to the tissues. So your body has lots and lots of ways to keep that blood pressure up. Now, your body only makes two hormones that lower blood pressure. Atrial natriuretic peptide. Peptide means it's just a little short protein. Natriuretic, that means like sodium Na, sodium. Natriuretic, pee out the sodium. That's what that means. So these are the natriuretic peptides. These are little tiny, little small proteins that make you pee sodium. One of them is produced by the right atrium. The other one is produced in the brain ventricles, not the heart ventricles, the brain ventricles. All right, if too much blood is coming back to the right atrium, if the venous return is getting too high, that stretches it, and that's a signal going, whoa, back everything off. Slow everything down. But both of those hormones do the same. They basically do the opposite of all of that. They oppose all of that. They say, don't release ADH. Don't release aldosterone. Don't release epinephrine and norepinephrine. Vasodilate. Decrease the blood pressure. Pee out the sodium. Pee out the water. Don't drink any water. Okay. They do the opposite of all the rest of these. So those are the only two um, natural chemicals that lower your blood pressure. So we're minding our own business, and the teacher says, pop quiz. <laughs> our blood pressure goes up, and so our heart and our brains release the natriuretic peptides. We pee out the sodium, we pee out the water, we don't drink, we don't release all those other good hormones, and we dilate our blood vessels, and all of that causes the blood pressure.